Hey guys, this is No Solution. I'm Scott, and I wanted to talk about this album I recently got. The band is Flood. It's called Polarized. Uh, how I came to hear about this is it has ex-members of Tourniquet in it. Um, Guy Ritter, the original vocalist, Gary Lanier, the original guitarist, and then Eric Mendez, who was in, in an er the early version of the band uh, for a couple albums. Uh, this just came out in 2022, and I thought, rather than just talk about this, I could uh, rope in some other kind of unknown albums that I have from the same guys. So, Tourniquet, if you don't know, was a Christian thrash band in the early 90s. Their debut, Stop the Bleeding, Guy and uh, Gary were both on this. And involved in the songwriting. Then Psychosurgery was the follow-up. Then uh, Pathogenic Ocular Dissonance. These are reissues, so that the, the uh, cover art's a little bit different than it originally was. Then Guy Ritter left, and they got Luke Easter on vocals. Gary was still in, in the band and involved in the songwriting, and this was Vanishing Lessons, where they kind of went in a more groove direction, uh, a little more commercial. Uh, Gary hung around for another EP and uh, Best Of, where they did a couple of new songs, and then he was gone. And then it became Ted Kirkpatrick, the, dr the drummer, it basically became his project with a revolving cast of characters to varying degrees of success. Some of those albums are good, some of them I don't care for. But um, then in night, so that was Vanishing Lessons was 94. I think Gary finally left in like 96. So 1998, this came out, Echo Hollow, Diet of Worms. So this was Guy and Gary's new project, and I haven't listened to this in forever. This was kind of part of my blowing off the dust was, geez, I don't even remember what this sounds like. Uh, produced by Bill Matoyer, kind of a famous metal, metal blade uh, producer from back in the day. Um, so this one, super groovy. Uh, m more in the style of Vanishing Lessons, not really thrash at all. Uh, it focuses on really melodic choruses. Um, lyrically, this is super Jesus-y, so if you're not into that, that might turn you off. <clears throat> um, yeah, the first four songs I really like. Again, they all really focus on hooky choruses and things like that. Um, then they do a really faithful cover of Sunday Bloody Sunday, the U2 song. Then the next song, uh, Take My Shoes, it's like a four minute song. It feels like an intro that never leads to anything. Um, and then the last song is super weird. It's like a love ballad, like a torch song to Jesus almost. It's, uh, I think it's nine minutes. And then it finishes with, with like a two minute kind of funk outro. It made me think like they were listening to Infectious Grooves before this or something. So kind of an uneven album, starts strong, kind of limps to the finish line. Uh, it is a full length. It's like 40 minutes or so, seven songs. Um, then they follow that up. Uh, that was 98. This is 2004. It was their second album, Superficial Intelligence. So this lyrically isn't as obviously Jesus as, as the debut, but uh, more, I would say, social conservative lyrics. We've got anti-abortion songs and... Uh, things of that nature. Um, this is even more kind of a commercial hard rock record. It's, it's still really focused on those choruses, the, those hooky choruses. Um, but really a middling album. I mean, I don't, I don't wonder why I didn't really remember this one. Um, some of the missteps I'll go over. There's a song called bring it. That is a nine 11 revenge song. Don't mess with America. Uh, this was in 2004, so a bit late, a bit late to jump on that bandwagon. And it's got like record scratches in it that sounds like a desperate attempt to be hip or get on the new metal train or something. Um, there, they do have a new songwriter in this one. He does sing a couple of the songs. Um, it's, it's okay. I mean, it, it, unless you're a tourniquet super fan and I wouldn't, I would not recommend seeking this one out. But that, and then, I don't know, Gary Lanier, the guitarist, had some solo projects.
that are really hard to find. Some were digital only. Uh, I know he became an atheist at some point and wrote a book about it. I've always wanted to read that book, but I could never find it. Um, but I guess he's back in the fold because Flood, this is a Christian album for sure. Um, again, a little more overtly Christian than how uh, Echo Hollow ended up. So if that bothers you, be advised. Uh, this is really back to like the techie kind of thrash slash power metal that um, Tourniquet really did on Psychosurgery, which is a lot of people's kind of favorite era of Tourniquet. Um, so right away, right away I was into it. And it may be Member Berries because I have such fond memories of that album. But I think it stands on its own. I think if, if uh, yeah, like techie thrash is is something you're into you might be into this really heavy riffs it's also super melodic they still are going for those melodic choruses uh guy ritter really has a a great voice for that um they use more of gary's vocals in this he does more like a harsh kind of thrash metal shout <clears throat> awesome solos great guitar work uh they do a interpretation of uh summer from the fort vivaldi's four seasons which Tourniquet did a lot of classical stuff like that, but it was mostly later on after Gary had left. So I don't know if that was maybe a tribute to, to Ted who passed away a couple years ago. Um, yeah, let's go through some highlights on this. Darfur, is a, it's a very long song, uh, eight, so, eight, or eight minutes or so. It's The main section is really angry, but then it ends on kind of an extended, almost sorrowful, sorrowful uh, solo section that I really liked. Uh, Biotech Babylon is the song I would say to check out if this sounds like maybe something you might be into. It's kind of, it kind of encapsulates what, what this band is. Um, really awesome dueling, sh dueling uh, guitar solo, really shreddy stuff. Uh, there's a lot of variety on here. There's some Spanish guitar. There's some bluesy solos and some flashy solos. Sometimes it goes in between both things and the same solo. Um, there's a song called Freeloading Larceny that is the only song with lyrics not printed, and it seems to be anti-socialism. I don't know if they thought that was, like, too hot button. They couldn't print lyrics for... And I guess maybe. I don't know. I mean, how, how pathetic is that, that you have a certain political viewpoint and you don't dare print the lyrics, but whatever. Um, the world is what the world is, right? Uh, the, the last song is called Stop the Bleeding, which was the name of the first Tourniquet album, just kind of, you know, trying to tie it back into the legacy. Um, and what I really, what I really appreciate about that is if you've heard the first, um, Tourniquet album, it's kind of a Christian merciful fate in, in a lot of ways. And Guy did, did a lot of falsetto kind of King Diamond-ish vocals on it. He, he pretty much gave that up after the first album. But at the end of the final song on here, he does one of those like falsetto yells that it, it really, uh, really tickled me because I remember the old days of Tourniquet. So, yeah, if you uh, if you think this sounds interesting, I would uh, give it a listen. Check it out. And I've been thinking I need a sign off. Everybody's got a cool sign off. I don't have a cool sign off. So I'm going to try this one. Nobody will probably know what I'm talking about except... Uh, Maybe Tom is in Arcadia, but uh, CM Punk is a piss baby. All right, later, guys. <laughs>